So you're going to offer alternatives. And then it's hard to articulate. You always try to put your customer on the least expensive vehicle that fits their wants and needs, but you always want to offer them the alternatives. Does that make sense? Yes. Why? Because it confuses them. No. Why would you put them on the vehicle? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you put a person on the on the vehicle that fits their wants and needs? Because it confuses them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What do you do? Move up. Move up. So, you got it. But to, unfortunately, typically, when somebody does that, the reason they've done that is because they've done a poor job fact finding or investigating. Previously, <coughs> they don't know what that one thing is that's going to trip the trigger. It's going to make them pull the, the trigger. They didn't. They should have known that they had to have love. Or they had to have heated seats, or they had to have the big screen, or whatever it is. And they showed them on a car, and now they say it's too much. It's not too much money, it's too much on that product. So you have to move to the product that does fulfill their wants and needs. So what you didn't do is find out what was important to begin with. That's why you ask questions. That's, That's why you have to ask questions. I'm sorry, you keep referring to a big screen. I don't know anything about a big screen on a car. So, What's a big screen? Simple. We got, you can, uh, in most cars, you can get like the regular radio. Uh -huh. Looks like a cassette. Like this. <laughs> Anybody remember what a cassette is? <laughs> yes. Amen. Uh, and then you got one that's like a has navigation. Looks like uh, a iPhone. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. I was like a television. I don't know. I, don't know. I thought you were talking about eight tracks up there. <laughs> I so, those too. whatever it is, it could be alloy wheels, it could be 22 inch wheels, it could be running boards, a long bed, a bed liner, whatever it is. There's something that it has to do. They have a motive, primary dominating buying motive, DBM, that is pre presenting as to what they want. And the only way you can do it is to ask these questions and then <coughs> present the features. Now, unfortunately, <coughs> uh, what, what's a feature? Leather seats. Yeah. Right, let's go around the. Oh, sorry. What's a feature? That's oh, cool. Let me throw, throw it out. Heated seats. Heated seats. Cruise control. Plenty of headlights. Tilt package. Um, bed liner. Um, massaging seats. One of my favorites. <laughs> Driving lights. Power windows. Emmy. Power locks. All the wheels. Um, let's see who's going to the backup camera. Navigation. <laughs> um, theater in the back, you know, for the kids. Where DVD? Power seats. Eco book. Yeah. All those things are features. Now, define feature. Here, write this down. Feature dash. It's something that's offered on a product that is particularly attractive. That's what a feature is. What do features cost? Money. More? Money. So, <clears throat> to really understand it, because if you just somebody, you tell somebody, hey, this car's loaded, they think it has all the stuff they don't need and it might cost too much, right? Hey, this is the nicest, newest phone made. That's the feature, the phone. Phone. Sounds expensive, right? You got to know what advantages this phone has over another one. Maybe it's smaller, sleeker. I get it out of my pocket easier. It has more money. Whatever it is, those are all advantages. The benefit is that I can stay connected. I can do my business. I don't have to worry about you know doing the jitterbug. <laughs> None of that. You know. So whatever it is, a cap of water. You know, here's the cap. That's the feature. What if we all had, you know, the thing is we put it in the fridge now, you know, without having to worry about it everywhere. That's the benefit is it's portable. I mean, see what I mean? I mean, feature advantage of benefit. You have to have that. Just the features just cost money. The cap costs money. You look at it from the scoreboard instead of watching the game, all this does is cost money. I can manufacture this for 10 cents less and make eight, nine cents more profit. It's all. But when you start thinking about the advantage of this, <laughs> Roger, you <really>, like you come. <laughs> the advantage of it, the benefit, how it affects your life. The advantage is that it's portable now. The benefit is that you don't have to, you know, carry it like this everywhere you go. You can put it in your cup holder, not worry about it. Follow me? Yes. You have to have feature advantages and benefits. So everybody get a new sheet of paper, new beautiful sheet of paper. Right across the top. Feature, advantage, benefit. I got this cat. 
because of this, I put it in the fridge. Because it's in the fridge, it's more refreshing. It's my feature, my advantage, my the, the cap. Put it in the fridge. It's more refreshing. Nice <laughs> cold water, by the way. <laughs> so, does that make sense? We're going to write them all down. The one that, whatever you said earlier, write down the feature that you said. Then I want you to write down the advantage. Then I want you to write the benefit. Then we're going to go around the room and everybody will write down yours too. What's that thing called that I said? What backup camera? A backup, a backup. <laughs> 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 Raise your hand when you're done. You've wrote down the feature, the advantage, and the benefit. You know, the feature is 22 inch wheels. The advantage is that it's going to help my resale value. It's going to look great. Or it's going to ride better. Have cooler looks. The, yeah. the benefit is <laughs> <laughs> so better. I, I, that's that's a real deal benefit to a lot of folks. So, what's yours? Pumpkin. Uh, heated seats, comfort. You have a warm hiding. Okay. Warm hiding. Okay. 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 So we're going to switch it just a little bit. So it's heated seats. The the that's the feature. The advantage is is that it heats the seats. Make sure that you don't have you know that's the whole the. It's a warm hind. Yes, you have a warm hind. The benefit, make it more personal, is that when you're starting your car early morning, the winter mornings, a beautiful <coughs> in Missouri, you go out there and you don't have to freeze. It's comfortable. You're gonna, so. It's comfortable, yes. But it, the benefit is, is that when you have to go out to your car in the morning and it's cold, you won't have to suffer through those horrible conditions. <laughs> now, are we spoiled or what? First world yeah. problem. First world problems. <laughs> so good job. Marcus, what do you have? Okay. What's the touch screen? Said it's better accessibility. What do you mean by better accessibility? I mean everything's right there on the screen. So Okay, and what's the benefit of that? Maybe you can access it by voice command, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road, so you can be safe for yourself and your loved ones. <clears throat> I'm spitballing here. Maybe that works. No remote, so you don't have to fumble around or lose the remote. Or... No, it's to find all the little buttons. Yeah, looking at the 15 different ends. So. It's probably just easier. Sweet. Everybody write everybody's down. Write his down, write his down. Just give everybody nicknames. It's because I won't call you man. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, Brandon. What you got? Uh, cruise control allows you to main maintain a cons uh, consistent speed. Uh, the benefit to that on long drives, you don't have to move your legs. You can stretch. They won't be restless. Great, good job. Everybody, write them down. Write down every one. You're going to be benefit you're going to be presenting a product to me by the end of the day. The old best. I know that you're going to be presenting a product to me. I'm going to want to hear features, advantages, and benefits on everything that you present. Whereas a cross side beam, sudden mirror. Motor mounts, liquid field, this is or whatnots. Come on. Um, I, LED, right? LED headlights, the advantages are more brighter. Um, the they're more brighter. The more brighter. <laughs> <laughs> Precision equals profit. Think about your words. What do your words say a lot about you? Um, the benefit is you should see better. You can see better at night when they're on. I mean, less, less probability you're going to get an accident. It's more you be able to see better at night. Excellent. Small grammatical issue, but man, awesome the way you put it all together. You probably did the best job so far for as far as the advantage and benefit part. So say it all again for these guys so they can write it down. Okay. The, the, they, the feature was LED headlights. They're more bright than the normal headlights, and the benefit to them is you can see better at night. Um, just lower the probability of an accident. You just see better at night. Just more clearly. Excellent. Everybody has a propensity or a, they at some point will have a tendency to do something minor like that. <coughs> The way you get better is to study and then practice, drill, and rehearse. Repetition will fix stuff like that. You can change anything except for a bad attitude. Stop me, money, me, Andrew. Randy. Uh, no baggage. Um, the advantages of that is um, you can use it for work. Um, you know, re 
resale, and, and the benefit is you're able to uh, tow like a large amount of weight with the vehicle. Yeah, you can take that camper you wanted to Alaska, right? Andrew? Uh, bed liner uh, keeps your truck uh, bed free of scratches um, and dents. Um, basically, your bed won't rest out as fast and, or uh, have anything to it. Yeah, you can have better resale value if you can carry anything you want. Good job. Next, Jeremy U. Um, I did the massaging seats. Um, <laughs> massages your seats while you're driving, or your back while you're driving. Which leads to less ache, so longer car rides. Go see that family that you didn't yeah, want to long, drive. Yeah, long trips so will feel like a, like a breeze. Yeah, it's good. Everybody right? Everybody's down, right? Yes. Carrie. Um, I did driving lights. Uh, the advantage would be safety, and the benefit would be better night driving. You can see the ditches more clearly. You see animals or people. Excellent. What about you, Mark? Uh, power windows. Ease of access, comfort. <coughs> What's that? Faster. You have to sit there and crank down your window and crank it up. Right, you are probably I right. have a car like that. I hate it. <coughs> I'm not paying 350 a month for it, is it? Are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> Dustin. So I had a Hemi as opposed to like a six cylinder. The, uh, more horsepower, better torque. Um, they have a little saver technology also. Um, benefits be better resale value, uh, more power, better sound, and a longer engine life. Man, he must have some research. Michael Blair. I don't know. He should type in Ford once. What did I do? Power locks. Um, <laughs> easier. You don't have to reach across the. <laughs> to lock your door, your passenger door. You don't have to crawl in the back to unlock the back. Power locks, the advantages. Maybe you can secure them from the fog without having to block okay. all four doors so that when you and your loved ones are in Walmart, you're not going to get carjacked. Get out your keys in the car and push it back. Michael. Hey, alloy wheels. Alloy wheels. They enhance the overall appearance of the car. The benefit is the resale value we're trading when it comes out. Do you also know that it's a lighter alloy that contributes to a better, lower? Brad coefficient, give me a fuel it. On me. <coughs> Maggie. So your backup camera thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see what's behind here, so you won't back up into something. Hopefully. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is that it gives you a little bit of 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 a yeah, for sure. Absolutely. The features of backup camera. The advantage is you can see everything behind you. The benefit is you ain't gonna run your kids. My kids are pretty crazy. We might sometimes I'd like, like to. <laughs> Chelsea. Um, I have the navigation and the advantage is the resale value and that you always know where you are and that hopefully you don't get lost. <laughs> So the feature is navigation. Yes. The advantage is that you have like a whole brand new Valley Atlas right there in your dash. Yeah. And the benefit is you won't get lost next time you're lost. <laughs> you're right. Next time you're lost. It's, it's good particularly good for them because they say, hey, now there's no now you don't have to ask for directions. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm stubborn. I take long cuts all the time. <laughs> I enjoy them. Actually. More family time. Yes. How about you, Rhonda? Well, I uh, I like this feature. My daughter just bought this feature for her car, and it made a big difference in the way we travel and when she travels. A, a video player for her children and my grandchildren. Your DVD, yes. Right. Uh, yeah, it, it, it entertains the kids, so it's less stressful on her. So, you know, the advantage is that it entertains your children and it's less stressful while you're driving. Isn't our legacy, you know, one of the most important things to us? Absolutely. Also, I mean, if you're... You guys don't know that until you get there, but yes, it is. You're making your life, their life, a little bit easier. I mean, you always hear them, oh, hey, if I had to cross a, if I had to cross a river, they're going to cross a bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things. Makes their life a little bit easier. And you don't get backhanded like that. <coughs> you don't get that. I got you. Luke Goose. Or the... Yeah, the armor.
The arm seat though, right? Yes. Uh, the power seats. Sweet, um, that's a good one. You could either go for single or dual, either way. Um, easier to adjust, and with that you could actually possibly have a memory. Um, I know with me, I tend to have my seat adjusted up closer to the steering wheel, and occasionally I'll catch my leg getting out. You know, if you have that memory seat, a lot of you shut that key off, it comes back, gives you more space to get in, get out. Sounds like you know what you're talking about. Go ahead and refine it for me. Make it real concise, real quick. So you got a power seat. The advantage is you don't have to manually adjust it. Mm -hmm. The benefit is you can get out in and yeah. out easy, easier. easier. Okay, it's a good one. Or if you have somebody, my wife's five foot two, and that's on her tiptoes. And I can't. I'm glad for memory seat because. Dislocated my hip twice. <laughs> Tell me, Tom. <coughs> sunroof. Uh, what about the sunroof? What's the feature of the sunroof? Features the sunroof. The advantages is advantages are advantages. Get pressure. Um, the wind doesn't blow on when the sunroof is open versus your window down. Like it does hair you don't get that thing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it makes me want to freak out. I actually have a friend that's claustrophobic, so she has to have a car with the sun out so she can open. I mean, she doesn't have to have it open, but she can open up the, the top and be able to see out and it makes her drive. Anybody think there. about their circadian rhythm ever? Mm -hmm. Write it down, you can look it up later. It's sort of runs the life cycle of people getting up at the sun, going to bed at the sun. It's a big deal. A lot of people like to have that feeling of outside in, and just with the sunroof. Really My helps. friend has a car that has two sunroofs. Sweet, what kind of friend? <coughs> it's a it's a Scion TC or something. Mm, sounds sweet. <laughs> what about you? Eco Boost. Eco Boost. Yes, sir. That's a Ford motor. That's it. There's no real advantages. Had <laughs> 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 to come back at you. Come on. Come on. The of the eco boost. Now it allows you to have more power the faster you go in your vehicle, and it's also fuel efficient. So okay. what's that benefit? Allow you to save money. On yeah, gas. you can still pull that cattle trailer while getting upwards of Absolutely. 14 miles a gallon. And allows you more power. <laughs> 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 Just plain. So, the benefits, why it helps you, it helps build value. You have to do that. You can tell, you start telling somebody, hey, it's a loaded car, and it's got this, it's got this, got this. All that does is cost is money. All features do are cost money. That make sense? Yeah. So, sometimes you think, I got all those features that I don't need, all of this cost of money. You've got to go one by one through those features, tell them what the advantages are, and how it benefits them. Not everybody, but them. Does that make sense? They don't pay for the feature, they pay for the advantage. If it's of no advantage or benefit to them, they're not going to pay for it. Follow me? So you got to show them that. Which brings me to something. A lot of people just talk, 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 talk. Talking doesn't sell cars, it doesn't build value, it doesn't help anything. The best salespeople listen. More than they talk. They listen to their customers after asking a few, perhaps, guiding questions. It's very interesting to me that listen and silent have the same letters. You have to listen to your customers to be successful. You've always got, you always think, oh, he's a salesman. You know? It's not true. The best salesmen listen more than they talk. Talking doesn't accomplish anything if it isn't with purpose. So listen more than you talk and try to have purpose when you do say something. Which is to explain or to demonstrate an advantage or a benefit of a feature. Does that make sense? Instead of, you know, which brings, you were talking about product knowledge. So there's three mistakes you can make with product knowledge. Let's go for different giggles. So would you think that consumers are fairly educated today? Yes. yes. Do you agree with that? <coughs> a lot of resources out there, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. Got the internet, and the 
Yeah. And when you're done with that, you can look somewhere got else. More, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got everything. It's just there's all kinds of information. Everybody's an expert. You know that? Yes. Everybody's an expert on something. Everybody that's been diligent and done something for a long time. Now all of a sudden they're an expert. Come on, get real. Get real. So number one with product knowledge, this is product knowledge. These are the three mistakes you can make in the market. I don't write down to anything. Too much problem. Number two is too much. But number one is you don't have enough product knowledge. That's why I'm asking. If you don't have enough product knowledge and your customer's been on the research, it's a big deal to them, right? Three years from now, when you're being wildly successful, Dustin, and you're selling 30 cars a month, it's just a car. It's just one of 30, one of 360 in a year. It's just a car. You know, it's just a radio spot. It's just a. What do you do now? Or did you do now? What did I do? Yeah, what were you doing? Yeah. Uh, okay, so to, to you, it's just another roof or another wall. Right. To them, it's the wall they're going to hang their families, the kids' pictures on. It's the roof that's going to shelter their family. It's the radio spot that's going to propel their business from obscurity into the big time. That's what it is. It's their dreams. It's their hopes. Their whole life. It's right there. And that's what a car is to folks. It's the biggest, nicest thing. If you think if that's the biggest, nicest thing, probably the second largest purchase you'll ever make, you hold it right there in your hand. You think you're going to know everything there is to know about it? And then what happens when you walk in and you're greeted unprofessionally by some moron that tells you that it has a flux capacitor <laughs> and muffler bearings? You, can, you need to know your product. You need to at least know enough to converse with the average consumer and perhaps more so and you, you can't which brings us to number two which is worse probably than don't have enough because you got an out here on the first six weeks that you're in the business you've got an out here somebody says that I don't, know, I don't know and it's okay you don't expect you to know everything right off the bat you will but if you tell somebody and you're honest with them you have integrity you say Hey, I started here a week ago. I'm learning as fast as I can. I don't know the answer to your question. Let me find out. They're going to forgive you. You're going to move on down the road. It's the ones that make it up are the ones that you're concerned about. So <laughs> please don't make anything up. Until you learn it, if you need to say, hey, I'm not quite sure. Let me get somebody else involved that knows more about the product. Do that. You're going to be okay. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Because then you got the other side, which is actually worse than this, I think, which is you know too much. I wish I had Jerry hands with me. He's one of the salespeople in our store. And you can see 45 minutes into his presentation after intermission, <laughs> their eyes roll back in their head. They fall, they fall over. And they're like, he'll say, Actually, the board in the strap is 2.41 inches times 0.73 millimeters, resulting in a smaller combustion chamber that gives you more power at the RPM range of 4,100 to 4,700. How does that suit you? <laughs> yes. I call it the fountainhead of knowledge. I mean, they'll just puke on you. <laughs> I didn't know any of that. I'm going to go somewhere where they don't tell me this stuff. That's where I want to buy a car. Anywhere but here. So don't be that guy. It's okay, Poindexter, wear your pocket protector, carry your iPad, whatever it is, but don't be that guy. Yeah, I was calling you Poindexter. It's a character. So, if you share too much, you, now, there's a difference in here. You can never know too much, but you can share too much. Okay? But seriously, you got it. You share too much. It's cool if you know all that, but I mean, some things just keep to yourself. You know what I mean? <coughs> and number three, and this is a big one, and it's, it's particularly a big one for everybody here because you have the opportunity to sell off every lot in Joplin and also in Bentonville. 
for Mr. Fletcher, which is a wide variety of brands. More to the truth. You know, all that. <laughs> you don't know your competitor, your competition. You know how your car is different. If it's a like product, what are the advantages of yours over theirs? You need to know how to make sense of a Chrysler 200 versus a Toyota Camry or a Nissan Altima or a Peter Sonata, whatever it is. Now, here's one thing I don't ever do. It's just a tiny look at it. No negativity allowed. We can joke around. We're all we're all friends in here. I hope. Still haven't seen any friend requests. Do you want to express that you want? You told us pretty quiet. I'm going to see who the viewers were. So, regardless, don't beat up your competition. Build yours up. Just like any organization, just like our organization. We didn't get, we didn't do 43 new cars, or 43 cars on Saturday because I was beating up everybody for what they're doing wrong. We got to 43 cars because I was elevating, I was encouraging everybody for what they're doing right. It's the same thing you do with your car. You tell them about all the good stuff. The way is over the bad stuff. You have to. But don't talk bad about your competitor. Why? It makes, it makes yourself good. It's not not only that, what if the person just didn't fall in love with your vehicle for some reason, whatever it may be, okay? And then they say, I think I'll go look at Fords. Can you take them down to the Ford lot if you're not a Ford guy? Right? You have successfully killed yourself. Plus, if you're a professional, here's the here's the big deal. If you're a professional and you're doing all this, you know your product, you know your product, you're a professional salesperson, you're sharpening the tools, you've got them all in your toolbox, you're ready to rock and roll, you know how to build value in the product. Right? Is there anybody else? I don't care how good your competition is as far as the product is concerned. Is there anybody else that can build as much value as you in the world? Shouldn't be. If you can't look in the mirror and say that to yourself when you're doing something wrong. Your greatest advantage is your preparation. You know and understand. <coughs> you understand how to get their motives. And you understand how to demonstrate it to them. Follow me? Nobody can build value as powerfully as you can. It's what I call put your freak on. I like to get crazy in front of a customer with a car. Because enthusiasm, there's a transfer of it. It's contagious. You're getting pumped up and you're excited about a 2.4 liter world motor, which is nothing to be excited about. <laughs> Nothing to be excited about. Sounds like a sewing machine. But, I mean, thank you, team, make it. Get people excited. Give them as much energy as you want them to give you, and you'll have great results. That's your best, your greatest advantage is that you're properly prepared. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Prove it. <laughs> Pickle peppers. I got you. So. Does that all make sense? Everybody write that down? Yes. Okay, sweet. So, what are the three mistakes? Don't look at the board. Come on, Jeremy. Do it. You need to know too much. Share too much. Share too much? No too? Not enough. Not enough? Too little? And, and then the third one is? Don't know your competition. Okay, don't sweet. Know sweet. So, <laughs> then once you, you have this product, you've asked the fact finding the investigatory questions. Still great work. <laughs> Investigatory. You're doing so all the things question. right, and you know what car to put them on at this point. <clears throat> right? You understand what car to put them on. And then you're going to go out there, and this is why the know too much is so bad, is because you don't do a personalized presentation. You think it's just. What? Well, I feel like Tom Green. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a, anyway, there's a depth thing. Never noticed that before. 
<laughs> so, uh, personal presentation. You don't. Uh, do you think it's possible that a nice young lady that has three or four kids is looking at a minivan and they volunteered that to you? Hey, I want a minivan. You think you need to go into the horsepower on the torque rating on that bad boy? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Of course, we do have the Dodge Grand Caravan RT. We call it the man van. <laughs> <laughs> List of things I'll never drive for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> no, it's uh, not my style, but somebody loves them. So, Obviously, but, they're out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody comes in and they're looking at that they have a primary buying motive. Like I was talking about, <coughs> dominating buying motive. Uh, they want to improve their situation somehow. Does that make sense? They're coming in, they're coming driving an old van that doesn't have a rear DVD player. They got an extra kid on the way. I can tell you, here's my story. I had a, I had a, a baby boy three, three years, three months ago. Uh, Which one? Three months. Three years or three months? Three years and three months. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, apple of my eye. Everything in the whole wide world to me. His name's Caleb. K-A-L-E-V. Best thing that ever happened to me. He's awesome. Incredible. Amazing. While my wife was pregnant, a mattress flew off of a truck in front of her and hit her car, doing zero damage, but freaking me out. <laughs> I wasn't there, but she called and told me about it, you know, crying, pregnant with my kid, my other kid in the back seat. So what do I do? Buy her the safest car on the road that day. I solved a problem. Unfortunately, it was a Mercedes Benz, and I'm still trying to recuperate. <laughs> so what do they want? Why do they want it? What problem are you solving? And then you concentrate on that. You have a primary, sometimes a little bit of a secondary, but you have a DBM, write it down, DBM, dominating buying motive. Dominate, what does that word mean? Merriam Webster Dictionary says to command or prevail over all others. Dominates, it's the one, the alpha, buying. Well, you want them to buy, right? Motive, desire that causes a person to act. That's a motive. So desire that causes a person to act. You have to know what that dominating buying motive is. Go over here. So. What is the motivation? What's the one thing that will cause them to take action right now? Sometimes you can look at a van or a car or a truck. You know, what's the most expensive car you ever sold? Tahoe. Tell us about the Tahoe. Tell us all the features. Just list them all down. <clears throat> Some. It was an LTZ, so it had heated seats, heated and cooled seats, um, leather, backup cam. Sunroof, Bluetooth. Memory um, seats, six liter yeah. motor, six two, five three, what's the five three? The five back seats folded down automatically too. Power back yeah, seat. Power power seat. Huh? Third row seat. Third row seating. Power second row and third row seating. That's pretty cool. What else? Uh boom uh twenty inch wheels, sorry. Twenty twos. <laughs> DVD rears, seat entertainment, navigation, toilet, sunroof, fully loaded, yeah. and side step. fold down, uh, step side. Now the person that's coming to buy that, what do they want to buy it for? It's the different. It's different. Luxury. It's different. Luxury. 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 Yeah. Luxury. Luxury. yeah, it's different in all, all cases. It's lag of the hot. The point is, there's a thousand features we could go over about a Tahoe. Or my wife's Benz, or heck, a Hyundai Accent. My Ford Ranger. Yeah, there's thousands of things you can talk about. You can talk about motor mounts, front and rear crumpled zones, ladder frames, you know, all this stuff, all the time. And about 90% of it, to 90% of customers, will fall right over their head. It's the 80 20 rule. You're going to demonstrate 20% of the features to 80% of the people. Occasionally, you get the nerve, 
don't get me wrong, that wants to know everything, good for them. You'll, you'll know them. They usually get out of the car looking like this. <laughs> I guess I said something like that. Because it's what I got out of the car. But, uh, oh, is that time? But, you know, the clothes we talked about is an exchange of one thing for another. In this case, money for machine. You have to have solved that problem, found that dominating buying motive, and solved it, finished it. If you haven't built the appropriate value in the features that they need by presenting the advantages and the benefits, you'll never sell a car. So you have to find that one thing. So uh, you can ask those questions like we were talking about earlier. What's the one thing that your car doesn't do that you'd like a new one to do? What's the single thing that you'd like to accomplish during this transaction? Do you have a question? And if they start saying, well, I really want to lower my, whoa, I can't spell dollars because it makes no sense. Do me a favor <laughs> and tell me what you want in the car. We'll handle the rest later. And don't talk about the money. Money never makes sense. Write that down. He says I'm right. <laughs> so why do people buy? And this is what we'll go, we'll go with now. There's all kinds of different Acronyms that people use. I'm going to use apes. Does everybody? Does anybody know apes? Anybody know space? Anybody know spaced? We're going to go with apes. <laughs> That's all you'll ever know. These 99.9% .9 of buyers can fit into this DBM. Anybody see the plan of the apes? Yeah. Yeah. Which one? I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've only seen the old one. I haven't seen it. So, here, these, this is what these look like. These are buying motors. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll give you the first one, and you can maybe guess on some of the other ones. Here's the first one's appearance. Presentation? Mm -hmm. Performance. Perfect. Oh, God. Boom. close. <laughs> Somebody that's very concerned about the environment. What did you just do? Destroyed a red flag, man. What did he say? He said too much to the wrong person at the wrong time. Does that make sense? So, the guy that's interested in appearance, you might not, you know, after you get him sold on the idea of something, might not repoint out the <laughs> second set of doors on it. You know, <laughs> you know we've got a charger, it's a sexy car for a four door car. <laughs> <laughs> Move a lot of people from challengers to chargers. And they, they leave forgetting that they have a second set of doors. <laughs> it's just the way it is, the performance, you know. You got somebody that's really wanting the performance, you can't move them off of the Hemi. You might, they might not do the leather or, or something like that, but they're going to have to have that Hemi motor. You know, the appearance guy, you know, he comes in looking at a challenger, he doesn't care about the performance. You can put him in a base model with a V6, put him a set of wheels on, and all of a sudden he's happy. Well, what about the guy that's economy? He's either looking at it for fuel economy or he's wanting to make a really great monetary decision. Hey, I'm buying a Toyota Corolla because it has a great resale value. I'm buying a Jeep Wrangler because it's the number one reselling vehicle in the world. I'm interested in safety because I have kids. And if you pitch any of these, it's never going to be universal. You know, the, the single guy without kids pitching it to safety, unless he's a weird dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta 
you've got to custom fit and tailor each one of your presentations to the right person. Does that make sense? No. So look good. It's an ego here, right? Does that make sense? It looks good. That's your ego. What's performance? Oh, it feels good. Sounds Makes you good. feel powerful. Good. Economical. I want to be smart, safe. I want to be prudent. Any of those things. Cell phones are a great example of that. I bought cell phones for every reason. I, I bought the first iPhone Plus 6 because it was ginormous. And I have big old hands. I, do, and I can't swipe all across it. I'm going to like back up and it just doesn't work for me. <laughs> then I can't get it in and out of my pocket. You know? <laughs> well, this one's dependable. Right here. My economy, my dependability, it's a good investment because I don't have to worry about dropping it. It's safe. <laughs> this one performs great. I bought phones for every reason. I, used, I bought an economy phone, the Nokia 6140. <laughs> That's right. You know, I do all my, my emails on it. Wait, all I did was play Snake. <laughs> you could call it this one. You know, I bought the safe phone, you know, the one that's you know waterproof, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you're diving. So I do a lot of that. <laughs> the performing phone, you know, the iPhone 6S, the appearance, it's the coolest, nicest, newest phone. You bought phones for all those reasons. And at the moment, in that moment, you would, nothing would have done on the other side. I, when I was looking for the economy phone, if they would have offered me the 6S, I probably would have said, dude, you're crazy. I ain't looking to spend $700 on a phone. I need something that flips. <laughs> you know? Jitterbug. Remember that commercial? The Jitterbug yeah. phone? Mm -hmm. Just nine nine keys and a send button. So you have to know what these are. Everybody cool with maybe going outside and, and trying this on some cars? Yes. Sweet. Can you facilitate that, Steve? Maybe get us yes, a, a car truck and an SUV pulled up. We can meet downstairs in front of the building in 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Okay?